Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, my name is Alexander Omotmire, and uh, I'm a PhD candidate at the Department of Mechanical and, and Industrial Engineering at NTNU in Norway. And uh, yeah, I will be talking about uh, hydrogen enrichment assessment of pipeline materials through in situ slow strain rate sensor testing. And um, yeah, so uh, it has been slightly explained before in a previous presentation, but uh, my work has been done in uh, the Highline project, which uh, in a similar to the last presentation, um, wants to utilize the existing um, pipeline infrastructure that we have in the, uh, in the uh, continental shelf in Norway um, to transport hydrogen gas instead of uh, natural gas. And um, here we will have both um, uh, hydrogen uh, gas from the inside of the pipe and cathodic protection from the outside of the pipe. So uh, really figuring out um, how it is affected is important. And um, in this project, uh, it is funded by the Research Council of Norway and the several industrial partners. And uh, the main work is done by both NTNU and Sintef and also Kyushu University in uh, Japan. So uh, uh, yeah, so very quickly how the, the project is structured. We have uh, uh, basically four work packages. The work package one is uh, looking at the hydrogen uptake. Work package two is looking at uh, micro and nanoscale uh, uh, behavior and, and the characterization of the material. And we have work package four who are doing uh, modeling as shown earlier. And then it's uh, uh, work package three, which I am connected to, um, where our main tasks are really to study fracture toughness and fatigue properties. But what I will be presenting today is this uh, task 3.1, which is uh, the material screening program. So uh, in this project, we have received four different pipeline materials. And to make our job easier later when doing the fracture and fatigue, we want to do a screening program to uh, basically find the best and worst uh, performing one in presence of hydrogen to reduce our experimental work. So here we can see four materials, A, B, C, and D, where three of them are vintage pipes from between the 1980s and early 2000s, and the one is a modern steel from uh, 2019. And uh, these pipes have different pipe diameters and different uh, wall thicknesses. So we are uh, investigating then properties in multiple locations in the longitudinal direction as well as the transverse direction. But for our experimental work, I will show later that we basically focus on the middle position here and the inner position in the longitudinal direction as well as position five here in the transverse direction. And um, Yes, so um, here we can see the chemical composition of the different materials. There is not really that much uh, difference, except that we see in general that these older materials, A, B, and D, they have a bit more carbon and a higher carbon equivalence. Otherwise, they are pretty much quite similar uh, in chemical composition. And um, yeah, if, if we go to the um, microstructure of the different steels, uh, we can see that uh, Basically, for all the old materials, A, B, and D, we see a lot of uh, banding in the microstructure. Um, uh, while for the modern steel, uh, basically, it's uh, much more homogeneous and evenly distributed. And otherwise, what we also see is that uh, these bands are not evenly distributed through the material thickness of the wall. So um, and that's part of the reason why we are looking into the multiple locations. And another point that we see is that um, the inner and outer surfaces behave they look quite similarly, so um, we have focused our um, our experiments on the middle position and the inner wall position, so position two and three here. Um, yes, so the testing that we did uh, is shown here, the test setup for testing hydrogen. So we tested uh, the s uh, one specimen in air for each material at a quite normal strain rate of uh, 2.5 e to the power of minus four. And we also did the in situ hydrogen uh, charge uh, charged specimens uh, where we had a strain rate uh, of uh, one power of minus uh, one e minus six, and uh, the electrolyte that we used was uh, this uh, sodium um, sulfate uh, solution, and we did it at a potentiostatic, uh, a constant um, a constant vo voltage of minus thousand atq versus standard coronal electrodes. And just to confirm if there was any effect of the strain rate for the test in air, we also did uh, for two of the materials testing at a slower strain rate for air. And um, here is shown just for one position for each material, the, the test in air and hydrogen. And we see basically for all of them, we have a clear loss of ductility while the strength remains quite similar. And especially 
what we see here, you can see the difference between the slow strain rate and the faster strain rate test in air is that uh, strain rate uh, it is strain rate sensitive and at least when we look at these curves and these curves we see that before basically the UTS there is practically no effect at all on the strength of the material. Um, yes, so um, then here we have tried to quantify the degree of enrichment. Uh, our main uh, our main way of doing this is through the enrichment index, which relates the difference in the reduction of area uh, in air and hydrogen to the reduction of uh, area in, in air. Uh, and as we can see here, uh, basically material C has overall the least uh, degree of enrichment, while material D has overall the highest. Uh, and here we have a different uh, way of doing it, just which basically confirms the trend. And um, uh, yes, uh, what we also see is that position two, which is the middle of the wall thickness, is the overall uh, most affected. So this is the um, position that we have uh, looked at further in the other investigations. Um, so just to show some fractography to verify what we see in the mechanical behavior, here we see um, macro scale uh, images of the specimen in air and in hydrogen. And in air, we pretty much see typical ductile failure with trough and cone, and, um, but in hydrogen we have much less necking and uh, more this brittle type of uh, failure. And in air, basically we just see normal dimple failure, nothing more, while in hydrogen what we see are a lot of these uh, lateral surface cracks, which we can both see uh, in the neck region, but we also see them a bit in the uniformly elongated region. And uh, uh, when we look at the same location as these um, lateral surface cracks uh, in the fracture surface, uh, in here and here, we pretty much just see a lot of uh, these brittle or quasi cleavage facets and also some secondary cracking. While in the middle of the specimen, we still basically just have a um, ductile dimple fracture. Um, so that was the testing on the base metal, but we also tested the well simulated heat affected zones. So since these pipelines, uh, some of them are quite old, basically from the 80s and 70s, uh, uh, we need to look back at what were the acceptance criterions when these were put into the sea, if we want to reuse these for, for gas transport. And what we see then is that basically the acceptance criterion from this uh, DNV uh, OSF101 uh, um, standard was that basically if if the vicarious hardness was below 300, it was accepted. So then we used this cleavage simulator to um, to heat up and then cool uh, in a controlled manner the, um, the material to obtain uh, basically this uh, worst case heat affected zone with a vicarious hardness uh, roughly of 300. Uh, and this test we did for position two of the pipe only. So here we can see the microstructure that we obtained after this um, simulation of the heat affected zone. And uh, basically they are all quite similar and the hardness value that we have on average is really close to the, to the limit uh, we were supposed to have. And if we look at what these are consisting of, it's basically a quite uh, coarse grain microstructure uh, consisting of prior Osnat grains with martensite and bainite inside the grains. And uh, there is also some MA transitions. Um, yes, and here uh, it's a summary of the, um, of the mechanical data from these tests. And what we see is that uh, the ductility loss and the enrichment index values um, uh, generally show a much higher uh, hydrogen um, uh, susceptibility to hydrogen enrichment when we compare that to the tests on the base material. And otherwise we see that the mechanical behavior on the these enrichment index is pretty much the same for all of the steels. So after doing this um, uh, well simulated heat affected zones, we are kind of normalized the steel and we cannot really rank these in a be best or worst case uh, for each of them. And um, yeah, and then um, uh, for some conclusions and uh, what we, we are doing for further work is that basically all the materials, both on the base uh, metal and also the heat affected zones, will reveal uh, a loss of ductility when we test in hydrogen, while the strength is uh, pretty much unaffected. And uh, for the base metals, the overall worst performing material uh, in terms of the enrichment index, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe specify also that that's for tension loading when we have a smooth specimen without an existing crack. B material B is the worst performing one uh, for and position two, while material C is the best performing one uh, on based on this criterion. And 
And also that's when we did the well-simulated heat-affected zones um, from position two, they all revealed a really similar enrichment index uh, value. And um, when it comes to the fracture surface investigation, both on the uh, base material and also the uh, simulated heat-affected zones, uh, when we look at it in hydrogen, we see a lot of these lateral surface cracks, both in the neck region and also um, in the uniaxially stressed uh, region. And when we look at this uh, on the fracture surfaces, we see a lot of these quasi cleavage and secondary crackings uh, when we are close to the edge of the specimen. While in the center of the specimen, we still have a dimpled uh, failure even in hydrogen. And uh, overall, we have kind of more of these little zones in the well simulated heat affected zone than we do in the base metal. And basically, the outcome of this screening program is what we are doing in our current work, which has been going on for the last over one year, uh, is where we are looking at the toughness and fatigue crack uh, growth rate properties uh, in hydrogen uh, of uh, the base um, metal and also soon the well simulated heat affected zone in position two for material B and material C, which were the best and worst performing steels based on this screening program. And uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty much it.